Well, welcome folks. Happy birthday. Yes, it's that time of the year again. Yes, this time of the year, every year, as the North America is moving out of summer and getting closer to fall, the United Nations, yep, this time every year, the United Nations trots out the fear mongering on climate change. And the woke media, yep, those dopey woke media buy it every time and broadcast this nonsense as though the latest onslaught from the propaganda machine of the United Nations onto our rational thinking is their duty to do their part in brainwashing you and your families. The whole response to climate change has been based on fear. Who sat through that opening UN-driven TV garbage last night? That TV news item last night that code red for the climate change and the world? Most folk I know would have certainly turned that nonsense off and probably switched over to Australian Sky News or Fox. The number of texts I got last evening from people angry that the Ardern Finance TV channels open with such garbage shows there is still a large part of our community that are wide awake to this constant onslaught onto the minds of our young as well as the adults who are easily led. July, August, every year, the United Nations releases a scaremongering crap report like we witnessed and heard from the woke media all day yesterday, capped by those two irresponsible TV channels that we have in New Zealand. Climate change is, of course, a natural process influenced by a wide range of factors, including the sun, the clouds and the ocean currents. Throughout history, the Earth's climate has been far hotter than it is today, and certainly far colder. Sea levels have been far higher and a lot lower. Carbon dioxide, the trace gas used by plants to make food, has existed at far, far higher atmospheric concentrations and certainly lower. But the United Nations climate models that are being used to redefine economic policy around the world only focus on the minuscule proportions, yes, the minuscule proportions of carbon emissions produced by you and I, in other words, the humans. In doing so, they disregard, yes, they've always disregarded and adults and school teachers and those dopes they don't even talk about the 97 percent of carbon dioxide that is from natural sources yes 90 percent 97 percent of all carbon dioxide is from natural sources but also the overwhelming influence that other crucial factors such as the sun have on the climate. I will ignore that. Oh, we will, we will certainly just say the 3% that we produce is going to destroy the world. These alarmist models, which blame climate change on humans, are being used by politicians, certainly our dopely easy led teachers, and not to forget CC, Crazy Cindy, our Prime Minister, to implement the UN socialist agenda, state control of all economic activity through regulation of carbon emissions. Fortunately, most scams motivated by scaremongery are eventually exposed, often by the very people who pioneered the movement before they were captured by the political extremists. Michael Schellenberger is a well-known and a leading American climate activist who, having promoted global warming propaganda for almost 30 years, he has decided to stop telling the lies. On behalf of environmentalists everywhere, he says he would like to formally apologise for the climate scare that's been created over the past 30 years. Climate change is happening. It's not just the end of the world. It's not even our most serious environmental problem. Here are some facts that few people know. Humans are not causing a sixth 
mass extinction. Climate change is not making natural disasters worse. Netherlands became rich, not poor, while adapting to life below sea level. Habitat loss and the direct killing of wild animals are a far bigger threat to species than any climate change. Wood fuel is far worse for people and wildlife than fossil fuels. I know that the above facts will sound like climate denialism to many people, but this just shows the power of the climate alarmism. Michael Schellenberger explained how difficult it has been to speak out against the climate scare. He said that he'd been embarrassed. After all, I am as guilty of alarmism as any other environmentalist. For years, I referred to the climate change as an existential threat to human civilization, and even I, he says, called it a crisis. Why did he use it, crises? Because it looked good and it sounded good. In fact, it sounded scary. But mostly I was scared. I remained quiet about the climate disinformation campaign because I was afraid of losing friends and, of course, the most important, funding. The few times I summoned the courage to defend climate science from those who misrepresented it, I suffered harsh consequences. And so I mostly stood by and did next to nothing as my fellow environmentalists continued terrifying the public and particularly young schoolchildren. But then last year, things spiralled out of control. That very silly, strange senator from New York, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, said... The world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. Yes, that silly bag, and that all should be a wonderful friend of our crazy Cindy. The world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And Britain's most high-profile environmental group claimed climate change kills children. And we have adults who will still listen to the nonsense being said and published by people like that. And they still believe in climate change. As a result, half of the people surveyed around the world last year said they thought climate change would make humanity extinct. In January, one out of five British children told pollsters they were having nightmares over climate change. Whether or not you have children, you must see how wrong this is. Let's admit that it may be sensitive because I have a teenage daughter. After we talked about the science, she was reassured, but her friends are deeply misinformed and thus understandably frightened. Yes, not concerned, they are frightened. We have a whole generation out there of young children including young adults, who are frightened. Adults must be aware how the children are being used to propagate this awful lie of man-made climate change. Yet how many parents, how many parents did not, did not turn off or change channels last night whilst that UN garbage-driven propaganda was being beamed into our homes by that pack of irresponsible TV broadcasters such as TV1 and TV3. And how many parents have questioned the school teachers, those propagandist school teachers that you have standing in front of the classroom with your children and they are pronouncing the end of the world because someone has fed that bullshit to those easily led dopey bloody school teachers who will stand in front of young children and tell them that the world will end because because of man-made climate change.